All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, it is Thursday, November 16th, and uh, tonight's select board meeting is starting. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This thing is so it doesn't make too much noise. There we go. All right, announcements. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, the tax rate has been set this year. Uh, we got it done uh, approximately three weeks earlier than last year due to the excellent teamwork of all involved in the process. The, uh, the new tax rate is $15.20 per thousand. Um, a reminder, winter parking ban is in effect from November 15th until April 1st. Uh, there should be no parking on any streets between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Vehicles in violation will be ticketed and towed at the owner's expense. Also, snow or ice removed from driveways, sidewalks, or private property shall not be plowed, shoveled, or blown across any public way, street, or roadway. Right. And Brad, would you uh, bring us the warrants? Yep, warrants. FY2409, payroll $189,105.81. FY2409 withholding $29,236.62. FY2409 withholding $67.32. FY2409 accounts payable $368,825.32. FY2410 payroll $185,127.53. FY2410 withholding $27,578.38. FY2410 accounts payable $178,579.46. Thank you. All right, that brings us to our agenda. Item number one, follow up on interim superintendent interviews. Uh, Beth, were you able to watch the videos? I watched a bunch of the raw video, maybe okay. not 100% of it, but. Okay, but enough. Enough. All right, so. And Brad, you, uh, you you had a chance to talk to the highway department today? Yes, I did. Okay. Beth, have you talked to the people at the highway department lately? I did not talk to the folks at the highway department since the last time I was down there, which is about a week and a half ago. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. And I know that you said that you got down there. I was down there yesterday. Okay. I think. Losing track of time. But I think, <laughs> I'm, yeah, it was yesterday. Okay. Yep. All right. So... Do you guys have any? Why don't you guys start? Because otherwise I'll just keep talking. Are we on the interim? Yes. Um, yes, the, I believe the posting for the permanent has not yet closed. I think that's closing next Monday or Tuesday. Um, the, yeah, for the, for, the, for the interim? For the permanent. For the permanent. Oh, for the permanent. Oh, have to check the yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure that hasn't closed yet, but no, the, no, and, but, yet. Yeah, no, but, uh, but the, the, the agenda item is specifically for the interim superintendent. Yeah. So that would be, and we're following up on the interviews from last week with Don and Gary. Yeah. So I guess one of the questions, because I probably missed the other meeting, the utilization of the interim superintendent outside of being another working person, what are we? I think fundamentally right now, I'll give you an example, item number four on our agenda, sign driveway permit. Yep. Unless we designate an interim, mm -hmm. right? Um, then the only way for for activities like that to occur is for it to come to us. Mm -hmm. um, and while, you know, we don't want to do that. <laughs> well, one, we don't want to do that. One, it just slows down the process, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and at the same time, I'm not comfortable necessarily appointing one of the people currently down at the highway as interim superintendent. Um, I, I think it. Would, I think it's a good practice because we don't want them to get caught up in all of in all of the administrivia mm -hmm. to have somebody available to be able to support that type of activity. I think there's mm -hmm. been a couple of things where Mike hasn't been able to make the call because he's not designated as the superintendent, though he has a lot of good experience mm -hmm. and can certainly provide solid input. Um, and but then it but it keeps it from like I, I want to call it, it protects him from it being his call if we have an interim superintendent and somebody finds something defective in in it going forward. And you need someone skilled that knows what they're doing, which is why you wouldn't even want Lindsay to do it. Probably. Yeah. 
I mean, because I'm sure there's rule like a, with it, a driveway permit. I'm sure you need to understand rules. what you're signing. Right, and and that's why, like, particularly on the surface, I mean, Gary with his background, I mean, just from a standpoint, Gary with his background, he's got all of the requisite training and experience to make those sort of decisions. I think Don is trustworthy to go research it if he doesn't know it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, so it, now if if. If there's a strong case for us to just designate either Lindsay or Mike as the interim, then I'm willing to consider that. But I think it's mm -hmm. I think it's better and safer and better for them if they have that cover of somebody. Because like my understanding, and I haven't had the direct communications with Mike, but I um, probably for like a week and a half, almost two weeks, right? Well, one of his complaints is the flow of communication. But the flip side is the communication hasn't come back this direction either, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if they've had questions or if they've had issues. We're not finding out about it. They're talking to other people within the town, but not communicating it back to the town hall. Not like I found out about the highway permit thing from talking to to Rich Chafee instead of hearing it from the guys. Mm -hmm. The highway permit thing. Yeah, like like. You mean the driveway? No, about about like that. Well, Mike had two requests for high for driveway permits, but he couldn't sign them, so he was just pissed off because the communication was poor. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing it from other parties, but that communication didn't come to us, it's coming in the form of finally hitting an agenda item here. So my thought is, if we put an, a, an interim in place, a lot of their role is really that communication piece so that we've got a form, uh, somebody who's, that's their job, it's the engagement between the town hall and the highway department. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, my, my understanding <clears throat> and <clears throat> From, from talking to people, including the uh, the guys down there, is that especially on on when there is a a road event, a, a plow, I'll say plowing, but even sanding, yep. is that the uh, for the highway department to uh, to operate at full capacity, uh -huh. they need they need the person who is in the superintendent role needs to, they the their current plan needs that person to have the licenses to drive a large commercial vehicle. Okay. I mean, Ryan drove the truck with the wing plow. Right. What I understand. And, and I understand we're not going to get that from an interim. The best we're going to get is be able to stick one of them into one ton unless Gary's got a CEO, which I don't think he is. does. Okay. He does. Yeah. yeah. And he's, I believe he's, he said he had his hoisting licenses also. Yeah. Right? yeah. So that's, so that's in, in Gary's favor for, for what they need. Yep. Part of me, part of me is thinking that with the, um, would it make sense to make the, to designate the interim a, a not for a less than forty hour a week position. Well, so I think and provide some just just the idea being to provide administrative supervision yeah. and someone who can sign those things. Yeah. And but it's it's like, but with without having to to it's like do, do we need and they're and they're available. I, I don't to remember covering that in the uh, in the interview. Did 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 uh, Gary say he was open to intermittent work? Like well, that? he's limited in hours. Yes, Gary because of retirement. his retirement. Yes. Yeah. And so the idea, one, one, <clears throat> he has twelve hundred. He can work twelve hundred hours in a calendar year. Yep. He has enough hours this year that it, it's not an issue. Three hundred left, I believe. And, yeah. yeah, and that's so he has over a quarter of his hours in less than a third, in less yeah. than a quarter but, of the year. But the concept of the interim superintendent was never mm -hmm. that it would be a full. In my head, it didn't have to be a full time role. It right. could be somebody that comes in. You know, starts off. The, I, my expectation or my thoughts from a standpoint of an interim is they they show up at the start of shift, mm -hmm. make sure that there was nothing needed for the day, what have you. You know, potentially work part part of the day and and go, or else take off and then maybe check back in in the afternoon, mm -hmm. see see what's going on, see if there's mm -hmm. any support required, or have the afternoon time be based off of if the folks needed help, they pick up the phone, they call, they come in, mm -hmm. they deal with it. And yeah. so with this position, is it contractual like that? Like we can say, this is what we're looking for you to do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we can, I mean, we can set that in the offer letter. Right, right. Right. So, so it's not necessarily, it's not one of the positions I don't think, and I'd have to double check mass general law. I don't think highway superintendent is one of the positions that you can do uh, uh, like a, a non-union contract, like an individual contract with the person mm -hmm. but in any job offer you can set expected hours what the pay is how the pay is and what have you so we can we can as the hiring authority because 
the the job description says things like up to a certain number of hours, right? Stuff like that. But we can, in the job offer itself, define kind of what the the work expectations would be for the interim superintendent, right? So we can say, hey, this is an offer. It's paid this amount hourly. Um, expectations with that it would be that it would average you know say 15 hours a week except in instances where we have a snow event and they're yeah, supporting plus that, snow time plus snow time mm -hmm. right and say hey expectation would be that you you know um, you know hold you know either kick off the shift first thing in the morning right or or set some time that's like the, their tag up time to make sure you know maybe it's around lunchtime which whichever like works for the individual we can either set it we can either set the expectation that they kick off the shift or set the expectation that they you know have a predictable schedule that they'll be mm -hmm. you know at the at the highway barn in order to communicate with with folks on what the what the needs are and identify any you know either gaps you know either stuff that needs to be communicated dealing with things like the like driveway permits dealing with things like private road uh, maintenance requests, stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? And and have them focus on those exception things that require a superintendent's authority. Yeah, right? and my thought also is that there's a uh, an opportunity here when they're in the office to <clears throat> do some knowledge transfer with Lindsay. Absolutely. It's like uh, as, when I heard that Gary had that some of that grant writing experience, it was like, ooh. Yeah, he could actually because, do some of the training as well. Right, right? He, he could share his experience with yeah. her and and then when we move, when when we no longer need Gary as an interim, it's like his experience remains behind, and and right. the town benefits through Lindsay's being right. better, more capabilities. Right, absolutely, right, and and then it's an, and it's just an opportunity to leverage that experience. So, right. and and I mean, and I I know that I've I've been asked why do we need a an interim superintendent, and I one of the things I'll say is because I'm tired of looking at the weather report, and whenever it's a squall comes through crapping my pants like I did on Monday night. Well, I, I think, like, I think metaphorically, but well, it was like, I, I it, was like it was, I mean, I had to, I, it's like, I had to call the guys out and say, I need you to, to go out there because the roads look, the roads look like they need attention. And some of them did. Some of the roads in town, I'm sure were, would well, have been the fine. Re and the reason I got on board with the idea of the interim superintendent was just because it'll allow us to comfortably and give the right time to hire or an actual superintendent, right. that's, and that's what so I. So you're not them. under the gun. And that's what I. And that's one of the things I told the people down at Highway when they were they they were, they were wondering why we weren't going straight to a permanent. And I said because an interim is someone who is no. They come in knowing it's limited term, but it gives us coverage and to so that we can find the person the right that person. is right for Brookfield and Brookfield is right for them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and I think that's important because without an interim, then we're, it's like I'm just going to be going. We need someone in here because I don't want to be worried about the state police calling me in the middle of the night saying your roads are bad. Yeah. Yep. It's like absolutely. So, um, so I'm glad that you all have sent that message because that's that's really where it's at. It's mm -hmm. fundamentally one. It's coverage for them for some of the things that typically the superintendent makes the decision on, whether it's when to start plowing or whether it's what because there are some private roads that we probably should do the maintenance on and we bought the material to do it and it's so that we can have emergency vehicle access mm -hmm. to them, right so um, we need to be able to make those decisions uh, obviously with, with the fact that we hold full-time day jobs and some in some cases more than full-time day <laughs> jobs right um, it's not going to happen with any of the three of us no. right so uh, we need somebody to, to act in that role and provide cover for them and provide better communication. So mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to make a motion to, to appoint Gary as a um, interim superintendent. Um, and then we can, we can talk about what needs to go in the offer letter once we- I'll second that. Okay. Um, when you say appoint, um, I'm here, what I think I'm hearing you say is that you're making a motion that we um, select Gary as our primary candidate and begin the oh, process yeah. of discussion good. with him about in in terms of uh, terms. Yeah. So okay. okay. So so yeah. let me let me clarify my motion. Yes. Right. I'd like to make a motion that we develop an mm -hmm. offer letter and and uh, and uh, make that offer letter to Gary for uh, mm -hmm. the interim superintendent role. Mm -hmm. Second. 
All right. All right. All in favor of the uh, select board um, um, selecting uh, Gary as its first choice for interim superintendent and uh, proceeding to um, discuss the um, details of the uh, offer that we would like to make to him, please say aye. All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. And so I'm going to give you a follow on motion. In the event that our offer is rejected and we can't come to agreeable terms with Gary, then uh, at least for the communication and and having somebody to, to make the call on things like the license, the curb cuts and private roads and any of the other kind of decision making or dealing with angry townspeople, do we want to reserve the right to, to uh, make an offer to uh, Don in the event that Gary rejects us? Is that the motion? Yeah. yeah. Second. All right. I'm going to think about that for a moment for discussion. I'm just, from a timing standpoint, I'm wondering if it would be better if we deferred that decision. And I guess sure, probably. our next meeting? Our next meeting, our next meeting is in three weeks. Seven. Right. It's and I think weeks. what you're going to get is if he says no tomorrow. <laughs> no, I, I know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's going to turn. So, so here's the thing. I don't think he's going to turn us down. I think mm -hmm. we can come to appropriate terms. Yeah. I think we can develop tonight publicly what what those expectations in the offer would be, mm -hmm. okay? But I also don't want to be held hostage, and if, if at the end of the day we can't get to some mm -hmm. solution, I don't want to wait until the 7th of December to deal with this. Mm -hmm. So. All right. I will. Either that or we're setting a meeting for the day after Thanksgiving weekend. Mm-hmm. One yeah. or the other. I won't be here then. Oh. <laughs> You're traveling the week after Thanksgiving? Yeah. All right. Yeah. We can zoom you in. All right. I will, um, as a, uh, all right. I'm, I'm. I've got a motion in a second. Yeah, no, I know. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just for, for, I'm continuing the discussion. I'm thinking that I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that as a plan B. I think that if that were, if we were to go forward with that, there, I expect there would be some concerns from the uh, from the people in the highway department and it would be incumbent upon us to communicate with them and talk to them it's like this is this is this is this is where we got to and this is why and based on where we are this is the decision we're making and these are what we see as the paths forward from here yep because my uh, fundamentally i guess i would say my under, my expectation is that um it's i would say that uh, Don, it's like if, if we don't have Gary, I can see I can see Don um, addressing some of the needs of the position. He can't operate the equipment, but he, he, he can provide the administration. He can't operate the equipment, but he can hop in a one ton when there's a weather, bad weather report and, mm -hmm. and run along the roads in one of the non CDL vehicles and make the decision whether we need to call people in or not, and mm -hmm. not have to pull Mike in from another town in order for him to figure out whether or not Brookfield's roads look like crap or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, he could, so yeah, and then and then my thought also is with the understanding that it's like if if a better interim candidate came along, we could always um, just interim tell Don, is interim. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, we 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 we're, it, it's that's interim exactly. Interim is interim is where I was going with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, interim is absolutely interim, and interim is um, you know at the will of the select board, and we can mm -hmm. we can put that in as a line in the offer is that you serve at the pleasure of the select board and mm -hmm. if it's no longer our pleasure so you buy mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah because you know mm -hmm. gary sounds really good he sounds like a really great guy with really great experience he might turn out to be a, a, a flaming, something else a, you know, a flaming <laughs> pile of doo-doo and, and we may want it to be at the pleasure of the board for him do <laughs> all right um all uh all in favor of the uh, motion on the table to um to, uh, to consider uh, to uh, have Don be our fallback position, for want of a better term. All right. Um, aye. Aye. Um, not yet. On this subject? Uh, not yet. When? Well, let's see. Well, let, let us finish. Let us, let's, I mean, we, we've, we've made our decision, and now we're moving on to our next topic, right. Dave. So I, don't, so, so I don't, so, so, I don't, so, excuse me, excuse me. I'm not done. Okay. So we, we are done with the discussion in the matter at hand. There is no new matter. We have not started our next topic. So I am not, I am not looking for comments from the floor about what we've just discussed. And since we have not discussed a new topic, there's nothing for you to comment on yet. I want to talk, comment on this topic you just discussed. 
We, 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 we have finished our decision, Mr. Holcrab. Excuse me. We are finished. We, no, we are not. They just passed a law in the Supreme Court in Massachusetts. You can discuss to me. We can comment. Okay. This is not an open. This is not. This part of the meeting is not open to comment. The law just got passed in March. In Massachusetts. And people can comment at public meetings. And you're violating me right now. I am violating you? Yes, you are. That, that sounds right. horrible. I would not want to violate I you. Right to I'm too far away from I you for that. Right to speak at and I have the Excuse me, Mr. Holcraft. Excuse me. You are, you, yes. It, well, thank you for the polite words. You're welcome. It's like, I am, I am not aware of that. Unfortunately, our legal expert is not here to adjudicate the matter. Oh, well, she's not that much on legal stuff anyway. Oh. Um, so. Uh, you're entitled to your opinion. Okay. Um, it's like opinion. Every, everyone's got an opinion. So may I speak? On the matter hand, you may ask a question. That's what I'd like to know. Why are we, why are we not working on getting a permanent person right now? Why are we spending all this time on the intern? Hmm. You're not listening. I am listening. No, no you are, are not. You are clearly are not Beth, listening. Beth, Beth, Beth the, the question is to me. No, and so, right. Mr. Holcraft, as, as we discussed just now, right. just a few minutes ago, when, oh, you know what? You were off answering your phone, I'll bet. So I will, I will recap for you since you right. felt the need to ask a question because you had to leave the meeting for your phone call. So we, the board has decided that in order that we are concerned that finding a good fit permanent superintendent will take longer than is prudent for the town to go without any superintendent. So the board has decided to pursue an interim superintendent so that there is sufficient management and attention at the highway department so that things run smoothly until we can find the right fit. The idea being that an interim, if we don't get a great fit, well, it's an interim. We can move on. We have, we have more options. It's like basically it's a, if you're staying in a hotel for one night, you don't look for the best. It's like, and the hotel's not the best, it's okay. If you're staying in a hotel for two weeks, you make sure the room's good. I it's a, it's, this, this, is, this is the same idea here. Does that, did that answer your question? The only thing that we should be concerned about right now. No, I'm sorry, okay. where's your question? Uh, yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Chair, through you. Yes. Uh, my understanding of the Supreme Court ruling is that the public comment ruling is only if there's a public comment section on the agenda. Oh. That's right. Oh, so and there, there is no there public is no comment public section in this comment meeting, Mr. Holcraft. I did not open the meeting to public comment. Thank you, Ms. So, Coughlin. So, so, you so, not leave meeting the whole law. But anyway, no, we no, all well we need then, snowplow drivers. That's what we need, snowplow drivers. Uh, Mr. Holcraft, where's your question? My question is, we've been now, we've been without a highway superintendent in the past, and we never had to have an interim superintendent. When we lost Mr. Chafee, we didn't have an interim. Right now, the only thing is time Mr. Holcraft, this board is doing things differently. I understand things are differently. We had a, we've had right crappy now, accountants. We've I, had crappy right treasurers. Are you? Are, do you suggest we go back to what we did before? This is what you should be concerned about. Thank you for your comment. Okay, good. All right. I hope it uh, gets home. So moving moving on to the uh, discussion, and I will I will make clear. I, there is no public comment period in this meeting. There's not, I envision none. No, that's not the way I need to read the law. That's, well, why don't you, uh, please, uh, please uh, I will, I will, I would, I would, uh, let's see, please, uh, please send me, a, I will, uh, I will, I will make the effort to research the law. Okay. It's, I was not aware, since I was not aware of it. Um, so that's moving on, we need to, we need to go forward with um, the details of how we wish to engage with um, Mr. Kelleher and how we see what we see is the details of his um, of yeah. his role here. Yeah, absolutely. So and so. So, from a standpoint of the offer letter content. Did you say my name? Uh, uh, same last said, name. Same last name spelled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chris Kelleher. Gary, we are talking about Mr. Gary, Gary Kelleher. Kelleher. And it's spelled. It's spelled, it's spelled differently. differently. Okay. <laughs> okay. So offer letter content. So we're talking about, this is an interim position. And I'm gonna e recommend we use the term serving at the pleasure of the board. Um, 
I'm good. I'm good with that. Make it very clear that this is um, um, at will. As an at will position, right? It's hourly. We need to figure out what the hourly salary breaks out to be based off of the standard salary. Did we figure that out? Um, I think it's written. I, I ba it was, basically, it was, it was Beth, Beth, you're taking, you're taking the annual salary and breaking it up into 52 weeks, 40 hours. Okay, so it's that divided by 20, 40, right? For an hourly rate, so. But that's include the overtime. Well, I understand that, but it, overtime doesn't really matter for. Divided by 20, 80, 52 20. weeks? No, they might be less. What? They might be less than 2080. Okay. Do you know that? Do you know it to be 2040 or 2080? 2080 is 52 weeks. 2080 yeah. is typically what it yeah, would I, be. Yeah, I think typically when you're hiring for, okay, that's fine. You can okay. do it under 2080 um, or 2040. Mm -hmm. um, or you said 20, it's 2080? Well, well, my thought is 2080 is 2080 52 is. weeks. If there's a reason to go with a number other than 52 weeks, 52 40 hour weeks, I'm open to that. I just want to make sure we're not making a math error. Yeah, no, I think I just misspoke. So okay. 2080, it comes out to be 35, 33 per hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the, and then, uh, um, is that what we want to offer from a standpoint of hourly? My thinking is that if we're going to cut down on the um, on hours. the num on the hours per week that we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't go so you're talking yeah. flat forty dollars an hour then no I'm, I mean I think 35 30 I think that number is is reasonable okay it's just I didn't want to I didn't want to try and go below that I mean I think that's that I don't think we can go above that without uh, within the existing budget well you could because we're not going to be he's not going to be working full time oh that's right so yeah. um, um, I would I would and, and, I would and, start with that yeah. and then see what we and see what we can do. So and I think one of the things we need to agree on here is what's the max hourly that we'd be willing to go knowing that the person is um, only part time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As um I would I think that's Do we part want to say that publicly? Well, my expectation or is, what we can do is we can give one of the board. So what we did during the first when we when we got our permanent superintendent last time was we gave the person a certain bandwidth of negotiating rights relative mm -hmm. to, you know, using their best judgment relative to how far they were willing to move for certain items. So, mm -hmm. so either, and, and, I, I won't be around next yeah. week. Yeah, and or, those and those and those have to be agreed in open meeting, but then the negotiation has to be well, negotiation well, can be direct. So it can be one of two things: either we can agree in open meeting as to how far that will go, which mm -hmm. goes on the public record, and that individual is aware of it as well. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Um, but should that be in well, an executive session? You could potentially put an executive session out there to do it, or what we can do is is. Mm -hmm give somewhat broad stroke authority to whoever's doing the final negotiation and we either trust them mm -hmm. to not make a really screwy decision or require that we bring it back in under mm -hmm. executive session to make the make the money decision of what mm -hmm. to offer so mm -hmm. i mean tom i don't know if you trust me but i know you're a tight son of a gun so. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm a pleaser. <laughs> you are a pleaser. Yeah, it's really kind of funny because I'm 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 the uh, I'm the tax and spend liberal, and yet at the same time I really don't care if I make everybody happy. So it kind of balances each other out. So, but your call. I mean, I uh, uh, right. So um, I think that's our starting point. I think you know, I, I think there's there's some room to move there by virtue mm -hmm. of the fact that it's part time and. I will tell you, typically interims are more expensive per hour. 
it's just the way that it works. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, so. it's, it's like a contract position because it's time well, limited, well, you're going to pay a little it's, more. It's time limited, you're not paying benefits, they know you're not paying benefits. Because mm -hmm. the 73000 is a benefit paid salary. It's a benefit, right. it includes vacation time. That was one of the reasons I think in my head I went to 2040 as the divisor, which takes it to $36 an hour, almost mm -hmm. even, uh, because you was, you're, you're putting their, the benefit of their two weeks off back into the pay scale. Is where 30, that's, yeah. that's where the 30, I think that's where I had 2040 in okay. my head. That, that, is that that, that's re, that, that that puts the two weeks kind of back into the base and it only moves at like 76 cents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because right. effectively they're, they're it, it, the benefit of that Time two off. weeks is, is, would, is, 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 accumul, is accrued as they work. And they, they're not given two weeks up front or anything. I would suggest before you make any offer is see what he has been paid. So we don't send an insulting offer. <laughs> yeah, like see what he see what he made at Spencer. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, great. I mean, well, Spencer, that's, Spencer's well, a bigger department. Well, and and so that's a that's a good point, right? Whoever's doing this, and that's why I'm saying it. it one of the that might be an approach mm -hmm. that we give to whoever we say is the person yeah. that does the negotiation with the individual, right? And we give them like. You know, we can I'd be vote, I'd we be can, afraid he was getting paid seventy five, and we sh we show up at thirty five. And he's going to be looking at us like, "What the?" <laughs> right? I, I get it. Though part of that might be due to the one the the, the size of right. Spencer, blah blah right, blah. Right. Right. How much they pay their yeah. super or what have you. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, I get it. Okay. So, but that's where we could say, "Hey, maybe that's how we set the bar," and we say, "Hey, you know, the person has." the option to negotiate if they need to make it an adjust you know a good faith adjustment based on salary history for similar positions then then that's how we phrase it right mm -hmm. in in the discussion we're having right now mm -hmm. so, and then and then the would that come back and be ratified by the board or is, is that something that just who we authorize someone to cut a deal and then the, we can with the, with we can authorize somebody yeah. to cut a deal and we just ratify it yeah. But but we don't have the right to veto it if we vote tonight that one of us has the power to make that negotiation. Yeah, it, and, and I'm, I'm trying to understand the parameters under which we're, yeah. or what, what we're authorizing. It's like, are we authorized, like I know with the police contract, we've been authorizing Brad to communicate our position, and but Brad has not had the ability to, to make concessions on his own. Those come, right. ba those, we, those we, come back to our meetings. We could, however, vote that he did. We could have yes. just handed it all over to him and said, Dean, yeah, That's bring us fun. a deal. Bring us a deal. Bring us a deal. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> right. But he wouldn't have accepted that, right? Right. So. And so, no, and so, and so, and and I just want to understand. What, okay, so we could do it either way. It's a question of we ha we will have to decide how we want to do it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. I mean, I, I think a good starting point is probably 36 an hour, just because that's the 2040. It bakes the yeah. vacation and, time back in. And it's but a round it may number. Be, it, may be, it may be way low. And so I think that is contingent on uh, uh, research uh, regarding uh, similar position salary history. Mm -hmm. I think we set the expectation uh, that uh, it'll be approximately 20 hours a week, uh, you know, except uh, for reason of uh, uh, for reason of pa of plow support. Yeah, plus plus on on call time. I don't know what we want to call it, but basically plows or yeah. there's a tree in the road and someone that. In, the super has to be out there okay. for part of that. So I would set the expectation probably of a, min a minimum of, a, of 10 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And then, but with a target of roughly 20 hours a week in support of the highway. Yeah, I would, say, you yeah. Know. I would say a minimum of 10 hours a week and in the highway office three days a week and right. targeting uh, 20 and- We review it after a month and or a top of 20 and a top of 20 hours and five days a week because after a few weeks we should have them at least a talk to one of, of us if no five days a week that's what you're saying is as a as a as a as a, as a, as a projected maximum yeah for the for the yeah, for, so for so the position four hours each day in yeah 
with the thought being that if, if there right. weren't going to have any so, hours, I expect I would expect them in there every day and not coming in for eight hours and then okay. day off, eight hours a day off. Well, I think that's one of those things. I think he should he should actually have the ability to make his own determination about how those hours are distributed and to to, to make the best decision possible based off of like what's on the calendar. Um, right. I would say you could, you could set it at a minimum of three days a week. I would say yeah, and I would say yeah. I, I guess that makes sense. I, I would say three three days is a minimum of is the minimum I, that contractually, yep. and that if he's working twenty hours, the expectation is he'll be in there five days a week. But it's like if the it's like if he can say no, the schedule it works better if I do it this way. It's like or they might okay. have something going on yeah. that that's yeah. We're, better for him to be yeah. there all day long. Yeah, it's like it, I would say the in general five days a week. Yeah. It's like but if. He can say, no, it works better this way. We're open to it. Yeah. But yeah, but at least three days a week in there with the guys. Right. Talking priorities. Okay. And then uh, anything else? Um, I would say that we should probably make clear that our expectation is that this is a, um, that this is a hands-on, that, that in addition to the administrative duties that the, um, that there, there's also hands-on responsibilities. And it, I mean, like driving, basically driving if, a truck when there's plowing, um, mm -hmm. and helping the uh, helping the crews as needed, either operating equipment or just being out there. Yeah, I know one. I know one of the. I know one of the concerns is that I've heard is that this would that this would be a um, duplicate paper pusher, and that Lindsay can do everything that the super can do. Pretty or much. Would do. Yeah, is that is that this would this would is that this would that he might see this as an administrative only position, and I think we want to make it clear to him that that is not our expectation. Yeah, and I think that yes. I think that's part of the conversation. I don't know how you put that on paper, though. I mean, typically a, that wouldn't necessarily be in in the job offers I've done. That's mm -hmm. typically not one of the things that's defined in writing. Mm -hmm. But that goes back to the at will thing. Yeah, and that, but yeah, and, I mean, and that, and that can be that discussion. can be handled verbally, and just yeah. it just be told. We tell them very clearly. This is our expectation. Yeah. If it's, and it's, and if it's at will, we're going to exercise our will to get rid of you. If you're just going to stay in, if you're going to spend all your time in the office, right? It's like you got to. That might be the easiest way to to. Yeah. Set expectations and make sure everyone's on board, and that way he says, "Oh, and if that's not what he wants, then he then he has a clear signal of yeah, this wasn't going to be a good fit." Yeah, exactly. So. So, and I guess first decision we probably have: Do you want to be the primary point of contact and do the comms with him? Do you want me to? Brad's going to be out of the out. Out, mm -hmm. out of the loop. So. I'd like you to be. Okay. So can I, so I'll make a motion that I, I be the person authorized to negotiate with Mr. Kelleher regarding the position of interim superintendent in accordance with the guidelines that we're establishing tonight. Second. Okay. Is this a, you negotiate the contract and we ratify it, or is this you discuss with him and then come back to us and the board decides? It's like, are, um, are, does the board have veto power or not in what you imagine? Just cause, I just want to understand what you're the way asking that, for. The way that I phrased that, it would give me authority to finalize, to finalize, it, it, to finalize yeah. an employment agreement with them. Okay, within the context of, of what we Within the discussed. context of what we discussed. And what's, it, what's, our, what's our top salary range? We haven't established a top salary range, but I got my understanding of this discussion is that we would set the top salary range based off of what makes sense uh, for his, based off of his work history as previously being interim superintendent in a couple of other places. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to be frank with you. If I was going to be doing it based off of that, I would look at what they paid him. I would look at our budget for the highway. I'd look at mm -hmm. our budget for the mm -hmm. highway total, yeah. right? And then mm -hmm. scale up or down, which it would mostly be down from yeah. the size just, of the communities that he was in, mm -hmm. just have yeah. a really frank conversation, right? Brookfield is not Spencer. Brookfield is not yeah. well, it's, um, Spencer's Rutland, like eight to right? ten people. Right, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's it's not the same size as these other communities, right? So the paycheck's not going to be as big, but here's what we can do for you, and, and it's in scale mm -hmm. to what you've done previously. Okay. Right. So, I mean, that's a pretty straightforward discussion, and I don't mind having it with somebody. Okay, so. that's that's fine. I'm, 
my one thing. All right. I'm, now, if, I don't, if, it, I don't, if I think it's crazy, I'm going to ask for a meeting, and even though it might only be you and I, mm -hmm. we can discuss it. Yeah, if you, if, you, if, you, if you feel it's getting outside of your parameters, yeah. it's like we, we can yeah. reconvene. I don't okay. tend to get go rogue, totally. I usually warn people when I'm going to go rogue. <laughs> All right. So. I'm not. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm good. It's like, so any other discussion on the motion hand? All right, all in favor of authorizing Beth to negotiate the agreement with Mr. Kelleher um, for, uh, uh, for the position of interim superintendent, please say aye. 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 Um, my, think, my one thing I'm thinking of is that the, if we, one way to square the circle is to increase the salary and decrease the hours. I mean, it's like that might be the way to make it happen. And my one concern is if he's out plowing at that higher hourly salary. And so it's just a concern. I don't know. And so the thinking is that it's is part of the, the snow budget and we have plenty of money there. Mm -hmm. Does it, does everything it come could. out of the snow budget? It or? can. <laughs> Okay, it's, it's coming out of snow and it's ice. Like, it's like I, I was gonna say I can't. I mean, my thought is it's like I don't think it's something we can solve now. But it's yeah. it's just my we'll what my worry was that that was that was something. It's like if if I just wanted to caution you that if you said oh we can make this work if we cut the hours down put the salary up then that's gonna then when he's plowing he's still at that higher salary and so I mean if we don't have much of a winter it's like well then we don't spend much money there. Whereas if we get a crap load of snow well, this the winter. The flip side is is a dude who's retired who just spent his weekend plowing is probably gonna cut his office hours that following week. And yeah, he's not. He's, I don't see him running twenty four hours in a plow truck. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and I guess I guess we could say that it, yeah, if you're that plow time, it's like if he's if he's plowing that that could count against his regular hours. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yep. Um. All right. I'm. I just want I wanted to get that concern out and just keep that. It's like so you could have it in mind as one of the other things you're thinking about. Yep. Okay. For sure. All right. So we've got a so we've got a plan going forward, and you're going to talk to Mr. Kelleher, Mr. Gary Kelleher. Yeah. And that's, is there anything else we need to discuss on the interim superintendent? Mm, All right. No. Um, so, Brad, you're gone next week. Um, well, I'm around next week. It's the week after I'm it's the week after. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So, is there anything else on the interim superintendent agenda item that we need to discuss? Um, so... Expected hours, pay, specifically it's um, uh, make it clear it's non-benefited. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem since he's retired. He's getting, probably getting his benefits through his retirement. Right. Um, I'll take a look at our personnel bylaw because I think even our, I don't know when we created the interim I don't think the interim position is described anywhere obviously it's not described anywhere in our bylaws mm -hmm. um, do we need to vote to categorize it as seasonal which I think will exclude it from many of the other things that are part of like our part-time employee mm -hmm. right I think we I think it, we could justify classifying a seasonal since we really it's like we really need this in the, the interim superintendent in the winter with the uh, in order to uh, keep so, the plow so fleet I'd, at capacity i'd like to make a motion that as part that it be designated in the job description as seasonal or in the in the job offer as seasonal so because uh, i think that will av avoid a lot of the other questions that might come out of the the our our mm -hmm. personnel bylaws. Does the seasonal really trigger a lot of um, logic or categorization changes? It does things like he, he wouldn't accrue vacation time, he wouldn't necessarily have personal days, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I figure somebody who's interim and only on a part-time schedule. Yeah. That's that's consistent with what I envisioned the interim also, so that it makes sense. Right, so we'll, okay. we'll, we'll classify it in the offer letter as seasonal. Mm -hmm. So... Um, that's about the only thing I th other thing I think 
that I can think of off the top of my head from a municipal hiring perspective. Mm -hmm. So we won't be paying for any more cell phones. Um, do we need to uh, um, actually get a contract though for a highway super cell phone paid for by the town that can I, eventually go to the next person as well? I would. Or do I need to go to Dollar General and get a prepaid and donate mm -hmm. it to the town? I'm I'm in, I'm inclined to. I know for a lot of the town employees, they they receive a stipend for using their personal phone for town business. Mm -hmm. I would be inclined to just the, this person while they're in the role would be eligible for that stipend since okay. I think it's a necessary part of their Do position. Do we have that? For we don't have a, I had talked with Kelly about it at one point because other mm -hmm. towns do have a stipend policy and we don't. I thought, I thought we had people getting a stipend. Well, no, we do. Yeah. But there's no actual policy. Okay. okay. Like, we'll pay up to $50. Right. Or something. All right. Okay. Then I would say there's, we should probably come up with a policy for the, st for the phone stipend, mm -hmm. but until that happens, we have other people getting a stipend. And so I think we should be ready we, to offer the stipend we, we could, for this. We could put that in the contract as hey, you can receive up to a, you know, whatever stipend for, mm -hmm. for phone. So yeah. what do you think so is much, reasonable? So much a month. Yeah. I think because that will tie in with the billing cycle and yeah. it, it makes sense if we're, if we're expecting him to be available, then it makes sense to help pay to make him available since that's right. the expectation so of the job. So what did you say up to $50? Um, I would say whatever we offer other people. I would. I would. Do you know yeah, what we're I, paying I, other folks? I, okay. I don't know. I, I would. I would authorize um, consistent with the uh, other town employees. I would authorize you to be consistent with other town employees. Okay, well, I'll find out what we're paying others. Yeah. All right. And then uh, anything else that was a concern or a trigger for you guys? Um. I mean, the only thing that came to my mind after talking with them and kind of understanding some of the needs, and I think it might be just more of a discussion we have when it comes time to hire someone permanent, is I was looking through other towns' job descriptions of highway superintendents and foremans at the same time, and it seems like we need someone that's good at both administrative and doing, the hands -on. doing the hands-on stuff. In a ideal world, what the way I'd like to see it is if maybe because Lindsay's already kind of administrative, figure out what she can take on administrative. So that way, and maybe you don't have to, I don't know if maybe you could save money on a highway superintendent by giving more responsibility, either time or uh, wages to Lindsay. I don't know. I've never talked. I haven't talked to her about this. Mm -hmm. It was just something that was going on in my head. No. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think that's an opportunity. I, I think it's um. It's like. I think she could do it. I think this is something that <clears throat> a little more time would have been more. I don't know. Honestly, appropriate, but it's like it would have been better if there were a little more time for her to to grow into her current role and to have a little more training up. And I'm, I don't mean that as a knock on her. I'm just saying it's sudden, it's 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 abrupt, and it's it's like. But from what I from what I can see, it's like she's she's answered the call. Yeah. And so I mean, and so I'm I'm open to that. I mean, but fundamentally, it's like with you want a me to department. Go down and try to catch, it's, is she taking next week off? Any part of next week off, or is she in Tuesday, Wednesday, or next week? Because I could probably swing in Tuesday. I I don't know. I know that I I have had some. I've exchanged some messages with her, and she says that she's um she's running out of time in the week to get done the work that she needs to do without well, we could, without we superintendent we could authorize her more hours no and, and and that's and i was intent and that's why i had number 2 on here was to uh, was to was to get to that okay was was, so was that was can, one of the other ones what to i was thinking is now you can keep focus off of trying to find someone to do some of that administrative stuff right and get that hands on Walder driver yeah which is yeah. really more of a form than this. It is it, it's than interesting form. when you look at the other job descriptions. Yeah. 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 Honestly, what we expect from our highway superintendent is to be a foreman. Right. And our foreman is really just a, a better paid operator that can go do independent right. jobs. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, right. Well, right. So okay. I think so. I think we're done with the interim superintendent agenda yep. item. So so that that moves us on to the um, highway transition discussion. So, it's a uh, so what the the 
the one thing that I wanted to cover on here was the uh, was Lindsay's hours, and just it seemed it she she has informed me that she's like she's getting it done, but she's running hot. It's like just having to work hard to get it all done in the hour she has, and given that's that she's always, answered that's the call. Always been a problem down there. Mm -hmm. That was a problem when when Cindy. Thompson was working down there. We've never given enough hours to the highway administrative person. Mm -hmm. and especially where we don't have a super and I would totally support extent whatever hours she's willing to provide, I'm pretty mm -hmm. much willing to approve even though we'll run over budget. Yeah, my thinking is that you. since since we at the moment since we're not going to be fully utilizing the supervisor the superintendent's salary it's like that could be used to um we're also running short operators from yeah budgeted, yeah so, so it's right. like so so we're asking them to do a lot so i see that there's money in the budget to to fund this expansion of work right it's like uh, as on an interim basis and then when the when the super when we hire a superintendent and we decide what we're so, going to do so that, how, that can be reevaluated. how many hours is she working a week now i believe she is working i want to say she's working 18 she's nine to three three days a week no she's gonna be more than that because she's benefited isn't she oh she is maybe she's nine to three four days a week 24 sounds I right 24. That's what I thought. Uh, if yeah. i were to guess i'd say 24. okay so do we um let's see so we could go to 20 so another hour if she comes she's coming in four days a week so another hour would be, we'd bring her to 28, and that's seven hours a day. Or we could just authorize up to eight, we could authorize her up to eight hours a day and say, if you need, it's like and say, if you don't need the time, don't work it. Or do we just offer, do we authorize 28 and see if that's enough? So she's currently at 24? On the expectation that, she, let's, let's expect that she's at 24 and base our discussion there. And if it turns out that her number of hours is different, I think it's, going to be similar so do we offer her another do, do we do we extend her another hour a day um, or four hours a week and let her decide how she wants to do it because you might want to extend two hours two days a week and get out at yeah. three two days a week and you might have to have that just figure out I, like I said I was hoping I could have stopped and asked her about that today but she wasn't there okay so I'll make a motion to authorize her an additional four hours a week, regardless of what her base hours is. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, is there a reason she doesn't work on Mondays, or just the schedule that? Yeah. It's probably just because that's the schedule that there's always been, and that's one of the ways yeah. that they limited the hours. So. Mm -hmm. so I think yeah. Cindy was only like 18 hours. She worked six hours a day, three days a week. So. Um, and did not get benefits because of that. And the select board at the time was totally adverse to her working enough hours to be a benefited position. So I, wanna so I, I just made a motion for four hours. Does anybody want to second. second it? Yeah. All right. Um, for discussion, my what I'm trying to figure out is that um, if she's at 18 hours, four more hours would push her into full time. Sure would. And my, my recollect, I, 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 I had a discussion with Kelly about this, and my recollection is that Kelly said that she was already in full time, which would be consistent with her having working twenty four hours. I'm text her right now. Yeah, we did. Okay. Huh? I already did. Oh, you did. Yeah. Text Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, or we can call her and put her on the phone. <laughs> no, we can. We've done that yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't have her number, but... Do you want me to do that? Yeah, call her. She's talking. Right What's that? She's responding right Oh, is she? Now. Okay. Ask, yeah. Ask her if she wants I to just talk to us. full-time job. <laughs> she has a full-time job. Yeah, do you want to still get her on the phone and ask her? And, and then you don't have to meet up with her. Well, I also... Is she at her other full-time job? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, what did she say? Did she say she's her, at her full-time job or she... Can, ask her if we can call her. Did she say she's at her full-time job or she has a full-time job here? Yeah. 
Okay, now I wish I brought my computer because I can't find that message, that thread where I was discussing it. Okay. I'll call it speaker. So we need that cable access so we can have the uh, people interact <laughs> Maybe she doesn't know it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have her right number? What do you have? I wouldn't shout out her phone number. <laughs> she says, uh, yeah. Yeah. Please leave a message. She says you have to know What? She says Tom has the number. No, yeah, it is. I have the number? Oh, uh, I, I got to find it. It's like I didn't expect to have to go researching in my phone. And well, I tell you what. Chris, can you just walk up here and write it down for Tom so he can come on this one? I mean, absent hard information. I mean, would it make sense to say that we, if she's at 24 hours, authorize four more hours, and if she's at 18 hours, can can she go to 20 hours and still be part time, oh, yeah, or does 20 hours trigger full time? 20 is the threshold. So, so if 19, 20, 19 hours is the limit. Before okay, so you have to so if, if she's at 18, she can only take one more hour before we made her full time. Yeah, although it really is averaged over the course of the year, but if she's been working her full 18. Mm -hmm. um, she said she's at dinner. She can't. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So I'll just, I'll just call. Yeah. I'll just say you'll call. Catch up with her tomorrow. Yeah, I'll catch yeah. up with her tomorrow. <clears throat> then, then how about this? How about we make a? Uh, how about we propose that we? Thank you. That we uh, go with a. Um, that we authorize going from 24 to 28, and that way, if she's not at 24. Or that if she's above 20, if she's already full time, that we authorize four more hours. And that way, if she's part time, we I'm gonna have to think about many, it some more. I'm just going to say how many hours. Or do before. we want to do something else yeah. if she's part time? Did she answer? Yeah. So, I'm just, I'm just concerned that I don't, I don't want this decision to push her into full time territory without that being an intent of the board. And if it's our intent, it's our intent. But it's going to, but making her full time is then going to put pressure on other parts of the budget because we didn't budget for that position to be full time. And I just, it's like, and I don't want to do that, so I don't want that to happen by accident. Yeah, 24, she said. She works 24 hours. Okay, that's right. So, okay, so just if make she works 24, then let's just say that, yeah. let's just authorize her an additional four hours a week. Mm hmm 28. Yeah. So a, mo so a motion to increase her hours from 24 to 28. I think it's already. I think that motion is already. Okay. Right. Was, was it? Yeah. Okay. And and the motion was to, was the motion to increase her hours by four? Or was it to increase it from 24 to 28? It was definitely a motion to offer Lindsay an additional four hours per week. week. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, 24 is consistent with what I understand. So. All right. Uh, all in favor of authorizing another four hours for uh, uh, Lindsay as the uh, clerk of the highway department, please say aye. 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 All right, and then uh, let's see. Uh, one of the things that I, it's like I talked to the, I, I talked to the, the crew there and uh, Lindsay and the crew as on Wednesday and we talked about um, plowing. Uh -huh. And so I have, um, I have asked Chief Blanchard to make me the uh, primary point of contact. So if if the po local police department sees that the roads are needing help, that they will call me, and then I will call Mike. I will call Mike and let them know. Okay. And then if and then the, the discussion with Mike was that if Mike and Eric deem that the um, that the contractors need to be called in, they will make that call. Okay. And I I'll and I I feel it's at this point it's better to defer to their their experience and let them make the call than, than to involve have, myself I in it. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I think the one thing I do want is I do want 
somebody, whether it's Kelly, whether it's you, somebody needs to have the call roster of the emergency operators if for some reason we can't get in touch with Mike or Eric. That is a good idea. So. Is that, yeah, I'll ask, I'll ask Lindsay to, need to, to, send, to send that to, 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 the, uh, to the board and to Kelly. Yep. And that way we, we all have it. And I mean, my thought is you guys probably are less likely to need it, but yeah, I think it's just easier to send it to I don't everyone. care whether I get it or not. I just want to make sure that if you're the guy who's on the call line that you have it. Yep. Yeah, um, motive, yeah they should probably have all our, just in case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they can't reach you, then. Yeah. I was going to say, so we should probably come up with a rotation where they, um, I'll be first in line, but we'll need a second and we'll need a third. And that way. Chair, vice chair, clerk, I'm last on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually out when it's snowing anyways. So. <laughs> All right. So Sorry. I will, I will, commu I will communicate that, that it's a, uh, I, I'll update Chief Blanchard for the, uh, for the police department that if they're not able to reach me and that includes just getting my voicemail because I didn't wake up in time, mm -hmm. that they should go down the list and then Brad and then Beth until they get, until they get a real person. Yep. And if I call, yeah, don't leave a message. Yeah, if if it's, well, yeah, well, or I mean, they can leave a message, they but can, I would continue on. I wouldn't wait for a call back. No, no, that's what I'm saying. It's like if they if they get the voicemail, they can leave a message, but then they go down the list until they get a person. And if they leave all three of us messages, that's they're at the they're at the other end of the list. That's all they can do. Yep. But hopefully they'll catch one of us. Um, and hopefully we'll have an interim superintendent so they won't need to contact us. Yes, hopefully we I will be able to give him that we'll be able to put the superintendent at the top of the list. Yep. But then if the superintendent can't be reached, know that we're next in line. Yep. Um, I found out that other, t what, what I was told was that the other towns around us will get a call from state police dispatch, but Brookfield won't. Brookfield doesn't. So it is my intention to find I'll probably find out from one of the, I'll ask them to find out who the contact at state police is and uh, ask them why ask them what we need to do to get on that list yes and then the school the uh, school was calling the highway department um, about because they need to, they need to call the highway departments and see what the road conditions are so that they can make their decision are we going to be on time are we going to have a two-hour delay or are we going to cancel again so for anybody that's questioning why we're hiring an interim superintendent mm -hmm. ding, 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 yes. ding, ding, it's it's having someone who understands the roads to make these conditions yes. these calls yep. um the uh I, I discussed that with um i discussed that with mike and the uh the plan there was that um Mike has offered to be the point of contact for the school because I think it's going to require a very quick decision. Okay. And if they call me, I'm just going to call Mike. Okay. So it, the idea was to take that out. So I was going to contact the school and tell, give them Mike's number as first contact. Okay. And then us as backups if they don't reach him. Okay. Because then if we're because then if they reach us, then we can. It's like with the idea being that until the superintendent, until we have an interim, until we have a superintendent in place, interim or otherwise, and then the interim superintendent becomes the first person on that list, and okay. then and then we once anyone in the highway department is on it, it can roll over to us, if if necessary. Okay. So that's so all these things I'm learning about how a highway department operates. It's like learning how the sausage is made. It's like. <laughs> I just prefer clean roads. I don't need to know. I think Discovery Channel needs a how municipal, how municipalities function kind of show. <laughs> this week on Highway Super. <laughs> just doesn't, it doesn't ring the way Ice Road Truckers does. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> and then other than that, it's, um, um, oh, leaves. I asked, I asked the guys down there if they thought they could Get the leaves in the village. Okay, what they say? They said they felt that they were uh, they were on top of everything they needed, and that they would be able to do it the week after Thanksgiving. Okay, so let's post it on the so let's post it on the website then. Yes, so yeah, we need to so we need to communicate that it's after the Thanksgiving. Week after, the week after Thanksgiving, they'll be picking up the leaves. They the will be picking up the leaves on between Monday from between Monday and Friday, um, November twenty seventh through December first. Um, so, the leaves should be out by Monday, and they'll be along during the week. Did you say Monday through Friday, is that what you said? They, yeah. they, the, the, the leaves should be out on Monday. They will be by sometime during the week to clean the leaves okay, up. Okay, leaves out. Should yes. Be out by Monday. Okay. 
Yes. The 27. Yep. Now that now that now that we've sort of got further along, uh, all the equipment's in good shape, ready for winter. It's like they feel that they can do this, and so I said, I know the the people in the town, in the village. It's like they've learned to rely on it. So it's like we've got the ability. Let's do it. We put it aside because we didn't want those guys overloaded. Yep. Okay. I think that's it. Um, I mean, I th I think that. Uh, it's like, I'm, I, I was, it's like I was, if I had known you were going down there today, Brad, I might not have gone yesterday, but. You couldn't call me. <laughs> it's like, I, no, I, I, no, I couldn't. <laughs> so it's just, I'm, I'm not, uh, I, but going forward, we should probably, I don't know, are you intending, are you, are you intending to continue as liaison to the highway department or are you rethinking that? What? I could, I'm okay. not opposed. You have, okay. And that's probably something we want to want to talk about yeah. and, and and talk about with them and see. Okay. okay. Great. All right. I don't. I think that was it. I say, if, if Lindsay's hours the most important thing, and the leaves were the things I wanted to to really bring up and make sure we we're all on board with that. All right. Um, so, uh, Karen. Yeah. Could you please pass along to our fr our, our our friends on Facebook about the leaves and make sure that they are uh, that they I'll can post that to the appropriate groups. Yeah. So I, I so think they should, put up, they should put the leaves out by Monday, November twenty seventh, and the highway will be picking them up in the village from Monday twenty the twenty seventh to December first. Is that what you yes. said? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because the highway department is now on their four, five eight schedule. Their winter hours. So, uh, I just want to go back to the conversation of CDLB drivers. Um, mm -hmm. Do we know if we've got received applications in at all? Um, I believe the, the posting for the, I believe that position closes next week, coincident with the permanent superintendent position. Okay. So I'm not aware of what we have for, for applications. Um, Karen, do you know how many applications we've received at the laborer position? Uh, I don't know. Okay. No, is that is that a labor position, position, position or is it? A labor, I don't know. That would be Lindsay. Okay. That doesn't even come to this office. Okay. So that, all right. Thank you. So do we have a listing for snowplow operators at all? I, my understanding is the contract, they, they have a full roster of contract operators. But not, it sounded like when I talked to them that not, they're operators, but they don't have class Bs. Yeah, I, so my, understa my, my understanding, and I could be wrong, is that the, they, felt, they felt that the, the contract operators plus the staff plus a, an interim superintendent with a Class B and uh, hoisting license was what they needed. Okay. It's, um, I was going to say, and that they may be leaning on Ernie, who is the seasonal help, who's working more to, uh, mm -hmm. to help backfill the position. Okay. But I, it's like I can double check that. But I, I got the feeling they felt that with a, uh, with a licensed superintendent who could who could drive the plow, that it would go. the The way they explained it to me is that Ryan would take, Ryan drove the truck with the wing plow, and he drove 140. He had a short route, and right. then if anyone had any problem, his route he'd be done quick with his route, and then he could go help anyone who needed help, whether they had a mechanical issue or they just mm -hmm. needed another plow to to get it done in time. So that that was my understanding. It's um, if that turns out not to be the case, we may have to meet again sooner, because we are a three we got a three week gap before our next meeting. And I get, the forecast only goes out one week. <laughs> Doesn't look bad so far, but cross my fingers. Okay. Um, uh, anything else on the transition? May I just say something? Um, when I asked her how many hours she worked, Lindsay. She said um, 24. She said she would love 32. I'm just throwing that out there because you might want to reconsider that. Uh, thank you, Karen. That's um, that's that that's that's good to know. To mm -hmm. do the job. Mm -hmm. So, do we want to? So, do we want to consider giving her 32, or do we want to stay at 20? Stay at 28. We'll stay. Were you having a we'll discussion stay. with her? No, we'll stay. At, we'll stay. I, th I think at this point it sounds like I'll we're going to stay what, at twenty-eight. Let me, let me. 
I handed you her phone number, right? Yes, you did. Do you need Wait, it back? Let me stick it in my phone. I'll give her a call tomorrow. Mm hmm So I mean unless, unless part of the reason I wanted like it. to meet with her I mean I've talked to her before but I I don't have a solid understanding of everything that she does. And that's what I'd like to know and I'd like to know what else she can take on. I tell you what we authorized we already voted to authorize 28, right? Yes. I can talk to her. It's not going to work 28 the week of Thanksgiving. It's not physically possible. Mm -hmm. um, that at least gives her a week at 28 for it would basically be two weeks that she would be working it before our next meeting. Mm -hmm. Um. So we have two options. We can stick with the 28, or you could make a motion that, based on pending an outcome of a discussion with her, that authorize up to 32. Authorize up to yeah. 32. Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we? My gut says my my my, my first instinct says to uh, let's stay with 28 for now and. We'll see how we'll see she how that works. Put that out however she wants to, because right. the, the twenty eight could bring her in. If she's working thirty two, she's probably coming in four days a week. I would just, or she's working twenty twenty four. She's probably working three eight hour days, right? If she mm. wanted to work four sevens, that gives her twenty eight hours, mm -hmm. and. You'd be amazed at how that making it a four-day thing would work, and still have, you know, more of your day left on the days that you're there. So, mm -hmm. so let's yeah. stick with the 28 for now, and I'll have the discussion with her. Yeah, I'm 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 open to more than that, but my thought is, without a better understanding of exactly what the pressure is, it's like yep. I, I don't want to. I'm I'm not comfortable going all straight to 38, uh, 32. 32. Excuse me. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So I think, I think that finishes highway transition. Um, just since number four involves the highway department, I'd, I'd like a motion to take number four out of order. You have that motion. Second. All right, all in favor of uh, taking agenda item number four um, next as out of order, uh, please say aye. 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 All right, uh, this is for the, uh, the, there's a driveway permit for five Molasses Hill Road. The work is done and there's a, some, they're due some sort of bond refund since they didn't screw up the road. Um, I talked to Mike Duval and uh, Lindsay, and they and Mike said, "Yeah, I've looked at it. It looks fine. They've, they, they're, they've done what they need to do. They should get their money back." And Lindsay says she's not authorized to sign it, and that's why it's on our desk. So, it's what, so my thought is is that it's it's up to us to refund the money or come up, or to authorize the refund or the return of the money, whatever the proper term is, and or to uh, give a reason not to. All right, so I'll make a motion that we uh, sign off on the highway permit for Five Molasses Hill Road and authorize the release of the uh, deposit funds back to the homeowner. Okay. Second. All right, all in favor of uh, refunding the security deposit for the uh, driveway cut at Five Molasses Hill Road, please say aye. 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 All right. Um, the signature here is for highway superintendent, so unless the board objects, I'm going to sign it. And no, you'd, well, I think, yeah. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we authorize Tom to sign in lieu of a highway superintendent. Second. All right, all in favor of authorizing me to sign, please say aye. 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 All right. Otherwise, all three of us have to scrunch our little signatures. Yeah, we, we don't want that. Uh, let's see. Refund amount due. And it's got a warrant date on here. I'm, I figure the accountants will put that in. Yeah. It's like, if not, they'll tell me I need to put that date in. All right, would you pass that down to Karen since I think that's done? 
All right, uh, item uh, item agenda next, right of number three, right of first refusal. I make a motion that we. Um, uh, <laughs> can, can I finish saying what no. you did? <laughs> no, I know. You we, we've talked so long. You want to move it? You have forty-five I have, minutes. I have actually done my homework on this one. I make a motion that we decline that we uh, decline our right of uh, first refusal on eighty-six and ninety Town Farm Road. Sorry. As that as that comes out of sixty-one B. Mm-hmm. Is that farmland sixty-one B? Yeah. Okay. Open uh, space. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say that's. Uh, I don't see us. I don't see the town having an interest in it in that particular land. No. Okay. All right. All in favor of um, of passing on our right of first refusal for eighty six and ninety Town Farm Road, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Of course, once people build houses, they're they're gonna complain that the town's water is running off the road and into their. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> what you're gonna do with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. But that's not our problem. <laughs> yeah. Agenda item number five, liquor licenses for Clambox, Bay Path Spirits, Oak Home Brewing Company, Brookville Run and Gun Club, and Central Package Store. Um, Karen, these are all the, uh, these are the 2024 annual renewals? These are the 2024 annual renewals, and they're all good to go. They all have the proper insurance. They paid the fee. They have the liquor liability. They're all set. Okay. I'll right, make a motion to... Uh sign off on the 2024 liquor licenses for clam box bay Path spirits oakland brewing company brookfield rod and gun club and central package store second all right uh all right i don't see any discussion so all in favor of um the motion to sign these um liquor licenses please say aye aye aye, aye. all right and let's we, are those are all they, signed they, these are there's i see three lines so yes and while we're signing, I'll make a motion that we sign the 2024 Class Two licenses for Home Auto Group and Paul Catton. Second. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right. I'm just trying to understand what this is. Uh, they're used car the dealer's auto, license? They're, yeah, they're car seller. Okay. Used car sales folks. Where are they located? So, uh, an interesting story, right? Um, home Auto Group is. They're headquartered on Allen Road, but uh, typically if they have any significant inventory, it's co-located with uh, A1 Auto Sports. Oh, the um, that was yeah, next, next to inner to city allow. lines? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so the business is technically headquartered on Allen Road, but it operates off of Route 9? Yeah. Uh, for well, zoning yeah, purposes. if they have inventory purposes that would cause a traffic issue on Allen Road, then they park it with A1. Mm-hmm. And then I think Kenton has uh, got the where the old Brook, yeah, old Holbrook, yeah, mm -hmm. used to be. So. All right. So. All right. So this is. Man, that was a significant emotional event. Figuring out how to right. do that. Well, we've got two licenses here. We've got one for David Holm, yeah. Allen Road, Brookfield, West Main Street, Brookfield. And we've got Paul Canton, uh, 2 South Maple Street, Brookfield. Yep. Those were the two that I read off. Okay. Well, you said no, but, I, but I, I thought you described two. one that was on Allen Road. That, that yeah, had... so Holm is on Allen Road, but then also West Main Street, which is the A1 Sports. And okay. then Paul Canton is where old, the old Holbrook place was. The old Holbrook. To so oh yeah, Maple? so there's two here. Is that oh is is that the um is that the is that two the, two Taff, is that Tassie's property now? No, no 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 it's right no, over it's, here. It's where Holbrook's it's, was it's across like, the It's school. like in between the yellow sign and Tassie's. It's a okay. little building. It, it used to be a little oh, automotive. Oh yeah, okay, yep. Shop, uh, it's, it's, gray, got, it's gray. It's like, gray. It's a garage. It, yeah, it's a little. It's a little too big garage with an okay. office space attached, and they usually have like like anywhere from one to five okay. cars out front. Got it. It's just it's just like if I'm going to sign this, I want to know where it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I thank you. That that answers my question. Um, any this further discussion? Uh, therefore, seeing as there's none, all in favor of signing the class two licenses for home home auto group and paul canton please say aye all right aye. Aye. oh bad here sorry <laughs> <laughs> i have mine somewhere 
All right, uh, agenda item number seven, sign common victualler licenses for Clambox, Brookfield Rod and Club, uh, Rod and Gun Club, Brookfield Congregational Church, Bay Path Spirits, Central Package Store, and Cumberland Farms. This is food seller, food seller license? Packaged food, yep. Packaged food. You will have more because we're waiting for four more to pass in there. Yep, I saw someone from Dollar General in the in town hall earlier this week um, okay, working things through. Yeah. All right, uh, all right. So I'll take a motion for this one. Motion to sign the 2024 Common Victoria licenses: Clambox, Brookfield Rod and Gun, Brookfield Congregational Church, Bay Pass Spirit, Central Package Store, Cumberland Farm. Second. All right. All in favor? Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Please say aye. 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 All right, agenda item number eight, sign ABCC 2024 Seasonal Population Increase Estimation Form, and that's the Alcohol Beverages Control Commission or something very close to that. And I believe this is us attesting to them that we're expecting our population uh, on not, July 10th. Not to increase. Okay. Well, it's going to be, the number here is 3454. If that's not increased, that's not increased. All right, um, so I will take a motion to sign this and move it along. Motion to sign. Second. All right, all in favor of signing uh, this, this form at the uh, stated number, please say aye. 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 Number nine, contract for painting the ballroom. Uh, I don't see that on here. Oh, there it is. It? What sign the contract for painting the uh, ballroom? Yes. I'm looking for the. All right. So it's in the packet. It's uh, it indicates it's Cooley Painting Company, uh, out of Munson, and it's forty six thousand two hundred dollars and that the work will be done by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. yeah. Do we have heat up there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because we fixed the second furnace about six years ago so that we could have heat up there. Okay. So. Right. Good, because if we painted up there and we didn't heat it, the paint wouldn't last very long. That's not necessarily true. Really? Okay. I'm not a painter, so I'll... Okay. If you do proper prep work, mm -hmm. it's kind of like the paint on the outside of my house doesn't peel off just because it gets cold. Mm-hmm. In the summer? But I, thought, but I thought that was that's an exterior paint, and so it would be designed differently than an interior paint, right? Well, a summer, in a summer home, well, is shut off in the paint. summer and doesn't need to be repainted in the spring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, really? that's just a case of just, like not doing the proper prep work, not mm -hmm. using the proper primer. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah. All right. I, I, what you say makes sense. All right, so um, so I'll take a motion to sign this contract. Uh, motion to sign. Second. All right. Any questions or concerns for discussion? Seeing as there's none, all in favor of signing the contract for painting the town hall ballroom at $46,200, $46, please say aye. 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 All right. 
46? I'm sorry, uh, 46,200. If I said otherwise, I misspoke. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Oldcraft. You're welcome. That's, Glad I could help. Makes me feel better for what I paid for painting outside of my house. <laughs> All right, and well, I did not pay that much. That is a big house to paint. Mm -hmm. All right, number 11, uh, I'm sorry, number 10, resignation, Barbara Wilson, Cultural Council. So I think we accept the resignation with, uh, with, with regret and thank you, thank her for her we service. We need to send her something. Something. Nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's Spent a few years doing it. <laughs> <laughs> a few. <laughs> I think the only year she's been off is the years that she was mandated to be off by the way the rules work for cultural council. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. that's, there's a state I rule. I think she's that, been on it for like the last 50 or 60 years. You have to take a break every six years, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, didn't we have to make an exception for Jean because her exception, right. her her break year was coming up, but she needed to be, we wanted her around for the 350. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Make a motion to accept with regrets and to please send her a lovely thank you, potentially with something a little extra special. Mm -hmm. So I get, I get, I can put some money in that kitty. <laughs> all right, um, all in favor of the? Uh, oh wait, I need a second of that motion. Second. All right, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 aye thank you. All right, and uh, number. All right, flying through the end. All right, we have the uh, fire. Oh wait, we have minutes. I'm getting ahead I of myself. make a motion to approve the select board minutes for 12 18 18. Second. All right. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes from 12 18 18, please say aye. 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 Getting ahead of, all right. Now we've got the highway department. Uh, motion to acknowledge the October reports for the highway and the fire department. All right. So uh, 12 and 13. All right. Um, all right. All in favor of acknowledging their reports, please say aye. 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 And Motion we're, to adjourn. we're at the end. <laughs> so we want say, to make it official? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor of adjourning the meeting at 744, please say aye. 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 All right. And we're done. <laughs>